Welcome to the Big Me Kickoff. It is Thursday, February 22nd, 2024. I'm your host, Kevin Noon, and I want to thank you for joining the show here at the Big Me Kickoff, brought to you in part by our great friends at nonaturals.com. Let me find that banner and punch that up. If you want to learn more about No Naturals, it's down here on the scroll. It's also in the show notes, and I will read you a little note about them here in a minute once we discuss what the topic of this show is going to be about. I went round and round about what I wanted to talk about on this show there were two topics, and I knew with having two shows coming up, having a recorded show on Thursday, having a live show on Friday, I wanted to kind of pick and choose. And the one that I'm going to hold off for tomorrow is talking about the college football playoff. We haven't even had a 12-team playoff yet, and there's already talk about going to 14, 16, what have you. Who's behind this? What's the reasoning? All of that good stuff. Again, on the live show, you guys really dictate what it is that we talk about, but I do like to come in with a topic. That will be Friday. One o'clock Eastern, maybe. That's generally around the time that I like to do the shows. But be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell. Don't miss out on a single thing here at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. Instead, we are going to talk about NC2A 2025, college football, the video game. EA Sports has come out with a lot of announcements today, and we will get to that here in a second. But first, I want to talk about our partners over at No Naturals. And before I even get into the spot, as I've said before, I use the product. I like the people cannot recommend their products enough because I am a big fan. And if that is the direction that you want to go, I highly recommend checking out No Naturals. And I'll tell you why. Are you ready for an entirely different edible experience? Welcome to No Naturals, where we're shattering the stereotypes of one note, slow acting gummies. Forget waiting over an hour to feel the effects. Our gummies are fast acting in just 15 to 30 minutes. You're not just choosing a flavor, you're choosing your vibe. With five core experiences and six custom combos, you're in full control. Whether it's energy and focus without the crash, a peaceful slumber that lasts all night, or a game-changing burst of bliss and euphoria, these edibles are the real deal. And, you know, I will interject right here. I like the ones for rest because my mind races five million miles a second. I can't sleep well a lot of nights. Sit there, take a no natural about a half hour, 45 minutes before bedtime. Generally puts me, puts me in a good spot quickly. Uh, Get to sleep, stay asleep. Those are the things I'm looking for. And the best part, you don't need a doctor's recommendation. No natural gummies are dispensary quality and discreetly delivered right to your door. So whether you're create, you're craving a productivity boost, a good night's sleep, or some blissful euphoria, say hello to no naturals. Try them today and use code huddle 10 for 10% off your order at shop.nonaturals.com. Know your edibles. Know your experience. No naturals. So we got that knocked out there. And again, read the scroll, check the show notes. All of it's in there. It helps us out when you use code HUDDLE10. It, it, you save 10% and it helps us out showing our advertiser that this is a good deal. And it really is a good deal. Speaking of good deals... We learned a good deal about the upcoming college football game. No, we've not seen game footage. No, we don't really have a release date. But we do know all 134 Division I-A teams have opted in to be part of the game. You don't have to worry about some school out there saying, nah, we're good. We don't need to be part of this. Talk about, you know, talk about a buzzkill if that would have happened. I would have needed some no naturals to to get over that. Now, what happens now is the 11,000 student athletes that make up all of these schools, I guess that's the number I read this morning, they all have to individually opt in. But we've learned what the deal is. Not only do they get a free copy of the game, and you know, Pretty much every player 
is absolutely jonesing to play this game, to be able to play the game as themselves. We have had a hiatus since the 2014 edition. So many great players have come and gone and have not been in the game, whether or not it's the old system of where, oh, well, you know, this guy, wide receiver 18 for Ohio State, he's tall and and from Pennsylvania and is pretty darn good. Wink, wink. We knew who that was supposed to be to where we are now with players opting in. So not only do they get a copy of the game, but they will also get $600. Now, when we talk about players who are getting tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars for NIL deals, getting car leases and everything else, $600, you're going to get a handful of tanks of gas for that or whatever. But there are a lot of players out there that are not getting much, if anything, for NIL. And it, and it got me to thinking now there are going to be some players out there that are already, you know, huge known commodities, their NIL valuations, whether or not to use a website or you just kind of figure it out on your own or kind of figure out between the two things, because you don't know what you don't know when it, when it comes to this. $600 is nothing to sneeze at. And this isn't like a one-time deal. I assume that if you are an incoming freshman and you stay five years, you're going to get five, you know, you're going to get a copy of the game each year and you're going to get $600 each year. And I, I would assume, I would assume that the number would probably go up. Now that's not going to go from like 600 to 60 grand or anything like that. It might go from 600 to 650 to seven and a quarter, what have you, but you're going to make a couple of bucks on a game that you were already going to play a game that you already wanted to be a part of. So it got me to thinking of about the players that maybe, you know, certainly don't need that money. I mean, nobody's going to, say, no, I don't, I, I don't need the money. I don't want the money. You always want the money. Don't hurt nobody. May as well go and grab that money. If I see a dollar bill on the ground. I'm going to pick it up. If I see $600 on the ground. I'm going to look around make sure nobody's looking, make sure nobody's lost their wallet, pick it up. I mean, honestly, you know, you, 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 you play the honesty test. If there's $600 on the ground, one, it's probably a trap or an honesty test. John King Jonas is probably sitting there for 2020 watching to see if you're going to try and find, you know, the rightful owner or whatever. But $600 and the game. Out of all of the players, could somebody opt out? I mean, I guess. I know there were a lot of fans, well, fans and probably players that weren't particularly thrilled with Ed O'Bannon who kind of spearheaded the movement of we all know who's these players are supposed to be. And we, we're not seeing a red cent of it. Stop it. It's not going to be a case. If John Doe from Western Kentucky says, nah, I don't want to be in it. Well, we can't play the game now. We can't do it. It's just going to be Western, Western Kentucky offensive lineman 72. And I'm just making something up. Don't go and look it up and be like noon is, insinuating that this guy isn't going to be in it. I'm just speaking in generalities right here. You're just going to have to sit there and, you know, have a 72 and just name him, you know, a fake name, or you just completely omit the player and you go down the depth chart and you just elevate another player there. I mean, there are going to be workarounds. And I was talking about this over on the huddle board over at BuckeyeHuddle.com. And I highly recommend everybody should be a member at Buckeye Huddle. And if you're not, why the hell not? All the best team coverage, uh, recruiting coverage, all of that good stuff at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Join Tom or Tony Gurdam and myself, Mark Givler, Ross Fulton, Mickey Pettit, Devin Radcliffe. I think I've got everybody there. I mean, we, we, got, a, we got a great cast of characters over there. 24-7 access to us. I mean chats, everything else over at BuckeyeHuddle.com. But I was saying that if a player opts out, 
I'm probably going to process him out of whatever program it is. While I want authenticity and reality, I want authenticity and reality. And if you don't want to be part of the game, I'm here to help you with that. I'll just take you off your team. And, you know, everybody can make their own decisions about how they want to play. Now, how you play your own career mode or sing, just single player games versus what happens when you play online. And we'll see if there's cross platform support and things of that nature. You know, things, you know, may not be in your control as much because you have to be able to be kind of on a level set of standards and rules with whoever it is you're playing, whether or not you're playing against your buddy or you're playing against some kid from across the country or, or, or whatever it may be. This also brings up the question though, too. I mean, when I talk about cross platform uh, support and for those of you who aren't gamers, I have to always remind myself that not everybody who watches the show has the same likes and hobbies that I do and vice versa. That just means whether or not, a PS5 player and an Xbox player will be able to play against each other. And that's not necessarily been the way things have worked. If you go back to the old South Park episodes that were kind of a, a, a spoof of Game of Thrones and it was all about which game system the boys were going to get to be able to play games... You either had to be on one side or you had to be on the other side. Well, there's now cross-platform support for certain games. And I've always felt that it probably has been there. And I think that in a lot of ways, it could be a little bit of a money grab. If you have both systems and you have friends that run on both systems and you have the means, you might buy two copies of the game. So I can play against my PS5 buddies. And at that point in the South Park episode, it was the generation before where I can play against my Xbox buddies. But I think it just makes a lot more sense. Well, I mean, that obviously for the consumer makes a lot more sense to have the, cross, the cross-platform support. But when, when you look at things, which way are you going to go? Are you going to play the game? I, I guess that's the first question. Are you, are you a gamer? Even if you're not a gamer, I know people who don't have a system, haven't played games since Super Nintendo systems that are going to go out and buy a system to play the game are you going to play on xbox are you going to play on sony playstation which way are you going to go with that there certainly is going to be a career mode what team now obviously with this being an ohio state show and the vast majority of people watching being ohio state fans number two probably being michigan fans who like watching our ohio state programming either because they do like us as as personalities or just to hate us I, I can't I can't speak for motivations of anybody. But, you know, how how are you how are you going to approach that? Are you going to just play as Ohio State? Damn it, that's my team and that's who I want to play with and I just want to run this for a decade and see what I can do. Or are you going to take a lesser team out of a lesser conference and try to move them up because the way that these things have worked in the past is you could sit there and take a team that is a group of five team and work your way into a power five invitation. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a lot easier to have conference uh, realignment on a video game. You don't need to have a ton of votes and everything else. I've been kind of thinking about who it is I want to play with. I, I certainly will play a lot of games with Ohio state. One of the greatest things, one of the greatest tools that I ever had through the years of doing this was the years of building the rosters and learning the numbers of all the new players. After 2014, NC2A 2014, I did not have that option anymore. And I wasn't as good, and I probably can't tell you the numbers of the third team offensive line, the way that I used to be able to, because I wasn't actually going through and creating it. Now, again, the way that this system is going to work, you're not going to be going in and building the roster. You're not going to go there on day one and be, you know, holding up your sheet and being like, all right, number one is so-and-so and and let's build that in and blah, blah, blah. And, oh, these 14 players have been left off the roster. I have to add them. 
the players who have opted in are already going to be in there. Now, I am going to be curious to see what the roster size is. Are is every team going to be 85 scholarship players? It's going to be 60. What I mean, what are they going to do? It's a lot of data, but let's also remember that the last time that these games came out, they were on DVD, not Blu-ray. And a lot of people aren't even playing games on Blu-ray anymore. They're just doing direct download from the server. And it's and it and it lives on the hard drive of your system. Again, for those of you who are not gamers, but I think the ones that are not gamers are probably like, eh, I don't need to watch this episode. I'll watch the next one. Afternoon told us what what he was going to talk about. I have no interest in that, so I I don't care. I'm not going to get into that. But how deep are these rosters going to go? Because there is something, I mean, people will be like, well, I don't really think I'm going to play my twos a whole lot. Well, guess what? If you're playing Ohio State on a career mode, after 2024, a lot of your players are going to be gone. Especially if you're really good at the game. Even, even you know, some there, there could be some underclassmen that return in real world, in RL, in real life, IRL, in real life. But if you sit there and you're like, I want to play as Bryson Rogers, come hell or high water, and I'm going to score eight touchdowns a game and win a Heisman and win a Blitnikoff and win the Maxwell and everything else. Guess what? I mean, I guess, and what, he's been here two years now, I guess? I don't know. Maybe he's the wrong example, but he's going to opt to go to the next level. And I guess apparently that you will be able to import draft classes from the NC2A game to Madden, which is pretty cool. But the point that I'm making is I get a little long winded and I'm trying to work on that is you need to have depth. Yes, there is recruiting. There is going to be a robust recruiting system as part of this game. But are you constantly going to be a team of freshmen and sophomores? Or are you going to be able to build build depth the way that it's supposed to be done? Are you going to play a game where you're going to make kind of some wholesale line changes once you have games in hand? I guess if I guess if you're playing Heisman mode, if that's still a thing. I mean, obviously there're going to be different levels of, you know, rookie, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, JV, varsity, Heisman. Um does that mean that the injury bug happens there? Is there going to be something of, about roster management that you're going to want to sit there and pull your starters in the beginning of the third quarter? Will that help you, A, maintain your roster for the long season? B, gain experience to get those ratings of your players boosted moving forward to when the game advances to 25 and you're not actually holding a physical copy of NC 26, I guess. I mean, since the way that I don't understand that why they're, they're using the year numbers that they're using. Honestly, if it takes you a full year to get through a full season, then you probably are not much of a gamer. I have a feeling there are going to be a lot of people taking a day or two days or a week off and playing the game all night and, Marriages are going to be on the rocks because one spouse or the other spouse is going to be playing the game all night. Video games aren't just for boys. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of ladies out there who are going to be playing it too. No, a lot of ladies on the site who are who watch the show on the regular that are probably chomping at the bit as much as anybody to play this game. Might even be some that have like, I've never really played a game and I'm going to play a game. So to be determined, we will see what kind of informational drops we get over the next couple of months. Allegedly, we should get like, I think we're going to get like maybe a, a teaser video in May or something. I don't know. A couple more things that we learned. Coaches will not be part of the game. And that's fine for me. Okay, yes, it would it would be great to see you know, Ryan Day in the game to see, you know, Lane Kiffin to see who Dabo Swinney or whatever. 
if you're playing the game and you're realistically the coach, do you need to see a specific game animation like in cutscenes? Coach isn't out there running plays. Coach isn't out there making tackles. It's just for cutscenes. Do you really need to see that? Is a coach really going to lend his name, image, and likeness for six hundred dollars in a game? You got coaches that are making anywhere from, I mean, what is a what is a low end group of five coach making a million dollars a year to coaches making ten million dollars a year? Do you think that they really care that much about being in the game? But you also can't have a case where coaches like. I will do it for free because if you put one coach in and you don't put other coaches in, people are going to, their heads are going to explode. And I don't know. It also seems as if this game is going to be built off of the ESPN ABC announced crew to a point. We learned before I recorded the show, Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreet are going to be involved in the game. Apparently David Pollock is, and he's no longer on game day. He's just kind of chilling but he's going to be in there. So I think that there were probably some existing relationships, certain ways of who it is they went to. Now I would love, and again, we're talking about making a game into 85 gigabytes, a hundred gigabytes. If we do it the way I do, I, I would love to see announced crews from ESPN, which is parallel to ABC. We'll just say ESPN, Fox, NBC, and CBS and where kind of conference deals are there and look and feel and everything else. But then you might have to get involved with like the actual networks and things like that. But let's, let's just go for it. Let's just make this game the best that it can be. Let's make it real. But, you know, this is year one and we don't know what's going on necessarily i mean it sounds like it's being built on the madden engine in some regards which i'm not a huge fan of i have not played madden in the last decade i actually have an unopened copy of madden from two years ago and i regret not opening it now i won't because it's just like well there, what am i going to do play two years ago but for those if if you know hashtag if you know you know NC2A was built kind of on one engine and Madden was built on another engine. And I always felt that the NC2A engine was a cleaner game. It was a better game. It was easier to run the ball. And I don't need to go and play Pee Wee rookie version to have fun with the game and have success with it. But I always felt that it was a smoother game to be able to run the ball. I always felt that Madden was a little more wonky. And the thing, and you're like, well, well, these games are from EA. How, why are they so different? Because there are still development arms within, under the umbrella that do these types of things. And I, th I think that the one that was doing NC2A was like Tiburon or somebody like that. And I don't remember necessarily who was doing Madden. But even with that, I'm willing, I am willing for this first year to have to kind of relearn some things and everything else. Now, I don't know if I necessarily see them saying, we're going to roll this one out for a year. We're going to roll this out for two years, and then we're going to completely change it down the line. And that's my concern is that if they sit there and say, well, we're already here and it ain't broke in our eyes. So why are we going to change it? But I think public outcry will have a lot to do with it. And I'm going to tell you this hashtag spoiler alert. There is a 0% chance that every person out there that plays the game is going to love it. It is like a Star Wars movie or show or whatever. Nobody hates Star Wars like Star Wars fans. It's just how it is. And I have a really strong feeling that there are going to be people, no matter what this game looks like, that are going to have a laundry list of issues with it. We're going to have people who are going to say, I bought it and I immediately returned it lies i immediately returned it and will never play it again unless they do this this and this lies i think every person who plays it will have a list of things that they would like to see fixed enhanced rectified whatever we're putting the cart way before the horse at this point but for those of you 
who just for whatever reason skipped the first 20 minutes of the show. The exciting part of this is all 134 Division One A teams are in. There is no plan at this point for any one double A team to be part of it. FCS, if we're using the correct today terminology. We don't know how some of these other things are going to work. It, is it going to be a situation of where you are into the NC2A EA servers and you're going to get regular updates as things happen? If you sit there and you play any sort of like certain levels on there and John Doe from XYZ University is out for the year, is he removed from your roster? Because of that, is he is is he listed as injured? Is he grayed out and not able to play? Are you going to be able to do your own conference realignment? Can you put Notre Dame in the Big Ten? Could you put Notre Dame in the Sun Belt? Could you send Notre Dame to Mars? I don't know. I'm I'm very interested to see what's going to happen here. And I have a feeling I'm going to do multiple things at the same time with this game. I'm certainly going to play the single games with Ohio State until I've deemed, okay, I can run their entire playbook. I'm totally fine with that. I am also going to be interested to sim out seasons just for the hell of it, just to see kind of what comes out of it, move teams around, do things like that. I've already said I'm talking about finding another team just to play as, just for the hell of it. Washington State is the team that I kind of mentioned on Twitter that I might use. I know somebody mentioned to me Texas State. I know, you know, Middle Tennessee State. You know, there it it could vary on there. And my reasoning for picking Wazoo is nobody else wanted Wazoo. Wazoo and Oregon State were the leftovers of the Pac-2. So why not give them a boost? And why not pick Oregon State? I don't know, because I think Washington State is more of an outlier to me than Oregon State. I have a friend who covers Oregon State. I think Oregon State had a really good thing going before Jonathan Smith up and left for Michigan State. I don't see Oregon State as down and out as I see Washington State. Apologies to any of our Washington State viewers. That is not a slight. That is just an observation. But I'm really interested to go in and read the comments later to see what your thoughts are. Are you interested in this game? How how much are you going to play it when you get it? What system are you going to play it on? Who are you going to play it as? I want to hear all of this. I'm not going to follow this up immediately with the show. Now, as I said, I'm doing a live show on Friday. So if I get 100 questions about this, I guess we're going to be talking about it two days in a row. But I kind of want to know what your thoughts are. We will come up with something once we get closer to where we exchange gamer tags. I will be more than happy to play against any of our viewers, just for the hell of it. I probably want a couple of weeks to get up to speed. I don't want to sit there and get against somebody who has been playing Madden on the regular. And I, as I said, I haven't played Madden in 10 years, at least. And they beat me 70 to seven. And then I have to hear about it for the rest of my life, how terrible it is. And it doesn't mean that I want to sit there and I will only play you when I'm guaranteed that I can kick your ass at it. That's not it. I just want a more level playing field. So I'm going to need a little time to get up to speed. I'm probably going to play on PlayStation 5 because I like those controllers better than Xbox controllers. I have both systems. Probably the last last generation of games I will ever buy both systems. At this point, I'm rarely playing games. So the next generation, I guess I'll just have to see where NC2A takes me if I'm going to buy those. But I think we're still talking about the end of the decade before we get there. But we got about a half hour, which is a little bit longer than I usually plan on going on these tape shows. So I want to thank you for joining us. I want to remind everybody once again, check out our partners over at No Naturals. Use code HUDDLE10 at shop.nonaturals.com. And as, as I like to say... Know your edibles, know your experience, know naturals. Until tomorrow when we go live, take care, and I'll talk to you very soon.